But more than that, IFC4 also comes with much more classifications. So one of the basic things you want to do is make sure everything is classified correctly. So this is a structural model, which is uh, pretty easy because structural models generally have five or six things they are interested in, like columns, beams, labs, other members, reinforcement, that's five, footings, six, maybe piles. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's only a handful of things. Over here, I'm going to go into collaboration, and I'm just going to color code by class. So this kind of just sets up a general color coding of, of what the different classes are. So everything with the same color is likely to be the same class. So here we have all the slabs. And um, if I take, just select all the slabs. And yeah, they all look like slabs, except the things at the bottom. So these are not the slabs. Footings these are are there. Hmm. That's right there, part of your footing. So that's, that's not quite right. Uh, we mm -hmm. should be editing this. So you should be one of these things. And so this is a incorrect classification. And for structural, there's not much benefit between 2x3 and correct classifications. The real people who get the huge benefit are the services. So all the MEP folks. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot better classifications in IFC4. So if the moment you have anybody requiring a, a BIM model that has services, uh, especially if they ask for classified things like for facility management, where it's important to know that, you know, what type of object it is, IFC4 is the way to go. So in this case, we'll, we'll just quick, quickly take a look at the uh, classes in there. We see there's some mistakes to do with the slabs. So we'll just select all the slabs in there, hide that. We'll select all the walls in there, just visually skimming through. These mm -hmm. all look like walls, nothing too fancy over there. All of these look like columns. Yep, over there. These are not quite columns. These are probably should be bracing mm -hmm. under our member. So, so that's misclassified. So these, these guys, for example, if we hit edit over there, this should probably be a member. Then or we'll hide all the columns. Okay, and then we're left with uh, this thing over here, which is beams. Yep, these three probably look beamish. I'm not going to spend too much time over here. Then we have these things, provision boxes. You know, uh, provision boxes aren't actual things. They are virtual mm -hmm. elements. You should be using a building element proxy for that, which is good in 2x3. You see it's for a provision for void. Uh, and in fact, in 4.3, they, they've cleaned this up a little bit. It's now a, a natural virtual element. So that's all right. Uh, these things are less all right. So these things like... Um, Sorry, what does that mean that it's a virtual element? It just means it doesn't actually exist. I can't touch it. But you can see it in the 3D model. You can uh, see it in the 3D model, sure. Yeah, it's just like a, a, like a clearance, for example. Okay. But yeah. I can't poke it in real life. Yeah, in, in, in IFC4 and, and below, they, they kind of mixed building element proxies had two responsibilities, one being this kind of generic and the mm -hmm. other one being um, this kind of uh, virtual provisional zone space thing. Uh, this thing, however, definitely is not virtual and he's not a, a generic either. He is a plate, so he should be a plate. Uh, these are mechanical fasteners. They should be mechanical fasteners. So, uh, or, or this should be uh, what type of fixing? I'm not quite sure what this is, but there is a, a category called discrete accessory, which is perfectly good for these types of things. I'd have to look at the whole model to see exactly what these things are. Similarly for these, uh, this would probably be some form of discrete accessory. Uh, to an element. Yes. Isn't there a class for reinforcement? Because that's it. That's what it is. Well, this isn't just reinforcement. If it were just reinforcement, yeah, you should, you should use the rebar class. It's reinforcement from the slab to the balcony okay. slab. It connects these two elements. Fantastic. So that's what you should probably use. This thing over here, again, provision rectangle. Let me just see what the provision rectangle, oh, they, they look like voids. Okay, okay, so maybe it's part of some sort of a void. Maybe it's a hole that was forgotten to be deleted from there. Yeah, or not fully coordinated, who knows. Yeah. Let's just isolate all of the, um, I see building element proxy over here. So we just take a look around, there's a, there's a few of them. One more down, yeah, that, that was the void we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, um, a couple of uh, classification issues, but these usually do not have a high priority for structural. Well, it's not, not a big impact on structural. It has a much bigger impact on other, other models, though. Yeah, another little confusion is this standard case versus regular wall, which has been cleaned up in 4.3. It's now just wall. No more differentiation between standard case walls and walls. Point three, not in 4, IFC 4. Yeah, it's been cleaned up in 4, 4.3. Yeah, okay.
What are we considering as official? I know the official version of IFC is just IFC 4. Are you considering IFC 4.3? Are you checking according to IFC 4.3? 4.3 or only IFC 4? I would check IFC 4 because that's what's actually been released. Yeah. You can see yeah, this I know, one is I know, the official I know. ISO. Mm -hmm. uh, 4.3 is not yet out, but it's good to keep in, in mind so that you, you know where it's headed. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, if programmers had to had to be writing HTML, but they, yeah. or, or, or any software programmer working on a language which gets updated, they're always paying attention to where the language is going Yeah. so that they, they make sure that it's, that they're practicing towards that standard. Cool. Um, I guess the, the, the biggest driver for IFC4 is when you start looking at the non-geometric disciplines, when you start looking at um, the things for FM. IFC can do native costing and scheduling. You can have a cost library, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, cost libraries, and mm -hmm. you can have uh, scheduling templates and work breakdown structures and all the rest of it. And in 2x3, you, you had some of those features, but it was far from as developed as it is in IFC4. But is and it so, actually anyone using this deal? Scheduling through IFC? Do you have any examples? Are there, can I find any place where I can read more about this? Sure. So uh, Synchro and Bexel are probably the two big companies which use this, uh, okay. the two big proprietary ones. Of course, Blunderbib does it, but you knew that. Clearly, somebody's making money off it, right? People are, are paying Bexel to, to be doing this. So I dare say almost all of Bexel's customers would be doing it. Anyone who uses CostX and imports IFCs, by default, I'm not sure if CostX stores the costing data in IFC, but they certainly work with IFCs, and that's the first step towards it. IFC4 just has much, much better costing and scheduling capabilities. Or if anybody wants, like, like generating cost schedules mm -hmm. or automating things, or automatic cost takeoffs, things like that. Like people are already doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they want to do it with IFC, IFC4 is the way to go. If they're not doing it with IFC, then then so be it. Although IFC4 would still benefit them because they would have better classifications, they'd have more streamlined properties. And those simple things are important when you are extracting data for any means, any sort of schedule, whether it's a cost mm -hmm. schedule or a, I don't know, any sort of QA sustainability schedule, um, any sort of scheduling better classifications goes a long way. Um, also, the file size would be much smaller for IFC4. The geometry is much more parametric than 2x3. So you can handle many things like uh, smooth surfaces and curves much better than an IFC 2x3. So there's so many more reasons to be using IFC4. There's, I would say there's almost no reason to be using IFC 2x3 anymore. 